Hey, it's Mike here, and today, how your liver transforms on a vegan diet. We're gonna deliver a lot of science today, and yeah, it depends on where your liver starts out, how it's going to improve or not, and because of that, we're gonna be looking at a timeline on a ton of different research from people who have healthy livers, no liver disease, looking at their liver aging epigenetic markers, as well as people who do have liver disease and reversing the severity of that. So yeah, we're gonna look at a bunch of research and I will just come out and say that poor diet is the main cause of the most common liver disease. And therefore I'm gonna go ahead and say, poor diet is the main cause of liver disease. So yeah, this is really important. Let's cover a bunch of research and even put some faces to improving liver health. Let's go. I just wanna say that liver health has been on my mind a lot lately because of some kind of dramatic stories. Also just working with Dose for Your Liver. Some of you know about that already, but yeah, we have, for example, Michelle Trachtenberg, a very famous actor who recently just passed away after getting a liver transplant. We don't know all of the details here, but that's extremely recent and it's way too soon and it's a tragedy. No, she's only 39 and other than the liver part, I would consider this unrelated. Some people have said, oh, it must be alcohol, but you know, signs point to her not being an alcoholic, but that is a good time to just mention that obviously alcohol is a major driver of liver disease. No, not as much as diet, but it's a class 1A liver carcinogen as well. So yeah, obviously stay away from that. But then on a way more positive note, and I think this is just a good example of how powerful your liver is. I've been following a young woman in TikTok, her Emma, who had you know, advanced autoimmune liver disease and ended up getting a transplant. And she went from straight up like jaundice town to as what you can see in her most recent TikToks, looking like just a healthy, normal woman, which is amazing. And so yeah, our liver is super important. It's involved in like 500 essential daily functions in our body. And we just tend to forget about it. Like when was the last time you thought about your liver? <laughs> and obviously there are a lot of different liver diseases that alcoholic fatty liver, as well as infectious diseases, leading to like hepatitis C, no, but glow Globally, the most common disease here is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. We're talking about 25 to 30% of the world having this disease, which is wild. Better believe it. I, I think I'm just gonna have to leave the puns out of this video, it's not working. <laughs> and we're about to get into the timeline, but just a wild fact here is just how foie gras is made. We're force feeding geese and it gives them a fatty liver that people like to eat, which I think is messed up, but it just kind of shows the principle of like, if you overconsume in various ways, which we'll get into, uh, then your liver can end up storing excess fat and that can lead to a bunch of downstream negative effects. But let's get to that timeline. And we're talking about day one of going vegan and actually first vegan meal leading to less ammonia creation after meals, which leads to liver stress. Yes, from this study, we're talking about just a single meal in people who have cirrhosis of the liver, which is liver scarring. It can be caused by a bunch of different diseases, but yeah, we have a randomized controlled trial that split people into three groups, a meat normal group, a vegetarian group, and a vegan group. So they gave people these meals and then they tracked their ammonia levels over hours. And you can just see that the vegan group has you know nearly 50% lower ammonia levels than the meat group at three hours. This is really important because cirrhosis of the liver leads to an impaired ability to clear ammonia and that leads to higher blood levels of ammonia, which can lead to a bunch of different complications, including brain-related complications, crossing the blood-brain barrier in what is called hepatic encephalopathy, you know, a brain disease you don't want, and it can lead to a bunch of horrible issues all the way up to coma. And I'm not talking about Toyota Tacoma, the truck. I'm talking about the bad kind of coma. I made a pun promise and I broke that promise. And here's where things are really fascinating because each group was given 20 grams of protein and you know, ammonia, it's connected to protein, but they're saying particular animal protein metabolites can actually increase ammonia. For example, acyl carnitine. And they actually went through and tracked a ton of these different metabolites here, if you wanna pop that open for more detail, but they say, quote, Intermittent meat substitution with vegan or vegetarian alternatives could be helpful in reducing ammonia generation in cirrhosis. If only there was some way to like keep the liver stress low by just repeatedly eating those types of meals. Anyone have any ideas? Anyway, well, that was a study I wanna keep within that really short time frame for just one anecdote. And that is this woman who had a liver disease known as primary biliary cholangitis. And these results are absolutely astounding. She told Forks Over Knives that quote, within a day of adopting a whole food plant-based diet, I found I had more energy. Okay, fine. Well, by day two, her joint pain was gone. Within a week, my mouth was making saliva again. That's good. And with a month, all of her symptoms had disappeared. And this is a four year update essentially saying she still has no symptoms. But let's officially move to that three week mark and we have lower inflammatory proteins 
made by the liver. And this brings me to a bit of a more abstract one, but I think it's still super relevant. And that is really what your liver is having to do in terms of work. And according to this study, which was an intervention, putting people on a vegan diet, they had a one third reduction in C-reactive protein, which is really a major inflammatory protein that we make in our body. Anyway, we can move right on to that eight week mark with decreased liver aging markers. And this is interesting in the sense that we're talking about people that do not have liver disease, they're healthy. And this is actually from the Stanford twin experiment where they took twins, they split them up, put one on a vegan diet and one on a healthy omnivorous diet, which did include more vegetables, less processed meat, if there are any doubts there. And yeah, the results they were looking for were epigenetic markers, really gene expression markers, and which ones increased during age. And they found that yes, the vegan group's liver age epigenetic markers had actually decreased while their meat eating siblings stayed the same. And we saw these similar results also for inflammation age, heart age, metabolic age, those all went down in the vegan group. And we also saw better results for telomeres, those protective end caps on our DNA that are essentially a marker of aging as they get shorter. And while diet is an awesome foundation for liver health, of course, you can always do things to go above and beyond making even more choices, which brings us to Dose for Your Liver, which is today's sponsor. Again, we should be putting more thought toward our liver because it does those 500 duties per day. So what are some of those duties? We've got detoxification, protein synthesis, digestion, skin health, all this metabolic related stuff and more. And of course, dose is one thing that can help, but what the heck is it? Well, it is the most bioactive forms of turmeric, dandelion, orange, milk thistle, and ginger. And we're talking about one shot of dose being equivalent to 17 fresh pressed shots of turmeric in terms of bioavailability. And yes, they do have studies behind it. We have an eight week trial that found that over 86% of participants saw a 50% or more improvement in really important liver enzymes, ALT and AST. And another six month study found that it led to an improvement in people's cholesterol levels, which is heavily connected to your liver. Now I've obviously been taking it and it catches me off guard just how good it tastes every time. And I kid you not, in my household, there's a little bit of a fight over who gets to sort of take the shot first because it's so good. Of course, you could click the link below and use the code Mike30 for 30% off your first subscription order of Dose. All right. So yeah, those results are pretty amazing. And we can move right along here to that 16 week or four month mark here looking to Dr. Neil Bernard's study on liver fat content. And we're talking about just pretty normal US adults here. They are overweight on average, but this isn't people with liver disease in particular. So yeah, this was a randomized control trial where a group was put on a vegan diet and we can see that their liver fat, or as they say, quote, hepatocellular lipid levels decreased in the intervention group by 34.4%. And in addition to that, they had a 5.4 kilogram or 13 pound weight loss and weight loss is quite connected here. We'll talk more about in a second, but then we can move right along to that six month mark where we're seeing major blood improvements in people who have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. This was a study that was published in the Journal of Gastrointestinal and Liver Diseases. And while I'd love for it to be a randomized control trial, it was more just following people who went on a vegan diet here, but the results are just honestly astounding. And on some major results, we're looking at the ALT and AST liver enzyme markers, and these are both potentially indicative of liver damage, like a byproduct of that. And we can see that at baseline, the ALT levels were 99. And after six months vegan, they went down to 36, which is a 74% reduction, that's insane. And then in terms of those AST markers, they started at 54 and went down to 27, an exact 50% reduction. But for the most wild finding here, the normalization of their liver markers, you know, getting rid of this liver disease, occurred in 77% of the patients. That's huge. Huge, just like our liver, which is the largest solid organ in our body. Facts. And some of that benefit could have been due to weight loss, which they saw in the study. And I'll just say, people are always like, oh, well, yeah, the weight loss is different than the vegan diet. Well, it's still relevant because vegans in the US average a normal BMI when other diet groups do not. So there's clearly something going on there. I pull videos on that. And then we have another six month study that is from the British Journal of Nutrition published January, 2025, hot off the press. And this is a case where they had people with 
fatty liver and fatty kidneys. So I almost missed this one here. But yeah, it also put people either on a standard meat diet, a vegetarian or a vegan diet for six months. And the study does use the term steatosis, which really just means fatty in terms of an organ. So no, don't go using that on your friends, okay? We're not trying to bully anybody. Anyway, they say, quote, we have demonstrated a better decline in steatosis at the lower kidney pole, the total hilus, and the liver six index in vegan. And then another unique benefit was a you know, notable lowering in blood pressure in that vegan group over the vegetarian and meat-based groups. Okay, now let's get into the longer term, talking one year plus, which it's a bit harder to find randomized control trials. I'm just gonna go ahead and say there are no randomized control trials that go out that far on this particular topic, but we can just go straight to the top of the evidence hierarchy with another anecdote that was sarcastic. We had a woman who had non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and in 2021, before going vegan, her liver stiffness score was 13.2, which it says indicated severe fibrosis slash cirrhosis. And then by April of the next year, 2022, her liver stiffness score went down to 4.3, which I'll just say, if you're lower than seven, then you don't have liver disease anymore, which is crazy. But then a couple more years went by, she went down to 2.7. So she saw like a five X drop in that stiffness score. And this man reversed his liver cirrhosis in one year, originally facing a future liver transplant being told he had too much scarring to heal, but then he completely reversed his cirrhosis with a whole food plant-based diet. So that's pretty incredible. And then we have another supporting point for longer term liver health, which is eating plants. And this is looking at studies on plant-based diet index or indices. And while this is really looking at a standard diet context, these aren't people that identify with a certain diet, it's just how high they score on that index. The results are still pretty amazing. Now, with studies finding between 26 and 50% lower non-alcoholic fatty liver disease rates for people eating a higher healthy plant-based diet index, which is a good time to just mention that if you're just gonna go on a plant-based diet or whatever, or ethically eat a vegan diet and just eat Oreos and potato chips, like I don't think you can expect these results, but I also believe your standard vegan dieter is gonna end up eating you know, more plants, more antioxidants, more healthy foods, as we've seen by the Adventist studies as well just lower disease rates, diabetes, and on and on. And then obviously there's a difference between a vegan and vegetarian diet. And there have been some studies on a vegetarian diet in particular, and the results are mixed. But the study found that vegetarians were 53% less likely to get fatty liver disease. And then we have to ask why might these plant-based diets be helping at all? And one major reason is antioxidant intake. This also applies to long-term diet. From the study, high versus low antioxidant intake resulted in 43% lower non-alcoholic fatty liver disease odds. And these antioxidants, of course, lower oxidative stress that might be happening in and around the liver. And then we also have fiber, which is huge here from this study. It has been shown that a higher insoluble fiber consumption of greater than seven and a half grams per day revealed improvements in three different scores of liver fibrosis. And fiber in particular helps bind and remove cholesterol from the system, from the digestive tract, which helps in turn lower the fat content in your liver. And we also have the added benefit of no saturated animal fat intake, just lower overall saturated fat intake on a plant-based diet. And from this study, just directly says it there in the title, quote, saturated fat is more metabolically harmful for the human liver than unsaturated fat or simple sugars. And there are complicated mechanisms for that. I'll link the study below if you wanna read into it. But this sort of response to the narrative that you know these high fructose corn syrup sodas are really the only cause of of A, diabetes, and B, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And of course, those are not good for it. Excess refined fructose can contribute to fat buildup in the liver after it's turned into triglycerides, et cetera. But the fear mongering is real there. And I just wanna say that whole fruit fructose appears to have the opposite effect with from this meta-analysis showing that fruit itself is associated with lower non-alcoholic fatty liver disease rates. But this really paints a picture of why an unprocessed whole food vegan diet would be great. You lower that saturated fat, you increase that antioxidant content, you increase that fiber content, and you lower that refined sugar content. All right, now let's review the timeline for my own mental satisfaction and hopefully yours as well. Popping it open right here, we can see again, that first meal just blasts that ammonia down by about 50% compared to the meat meal. Three weeks, our liver is making a third less inflammatory proteins. Then after a couple months, we see that lower epigenetic liver age, which is amazing. A few months out, we see that 30% reduction in liver fat in overweight people. Moving to six months, we see that 77% remission of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is absolutely 
astounding. Also at six months, we see liver scarring score improvements. And then longer term, we see that 26 to 50% lower risk of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease with that higher plant-based diet healthy index. Again, though, not in people that are identifying as vegan, just standard eaters. But it's pretty clear based off the previous studies that actually going fully on a vegan diet, plant-based diet would have quite an amazing effect beyond 26 or 50%, I believe. And I do want to say that this is only based off the studies that we have and just the duration of those studies. It is likely, especially looking to those anecdotes, uh, that's these numbers are starting to come down a little sooner than the total length of the study, but you know, this is what we have in terms of studies and timeline. So in the end, it's quite clear that fully plant-based diets have amazing benefits for liver health. We have entire papers like this that I didn't even mention, just straight up recommending it for liver disease, more or less. And yeah, I think that research sums itself up. We got that 77% remission rate from that study, just the lower ammonia right off the bat with every meal with the vegan protein, not eating that carnitine, and the 30% lower liver fat and on and on and on to the mechanisms themselves, the increased antioxidants, the lower saturated animal fat, the increased fiber, which itself is one of the reasons that vegans are less likely to overconsume calories and maintain a normal BMI because fiber is filling. So yeah, I would sum this up by saying liver, how about lover, okay? Because you should care about this super important organ. <laughs> and if you do, again, wanna go above and beyond and try dose for your liver, then you can click the link below and use the code Mike30 for 30% off your first subscription order. So anyway, let me know down below if you or anyone you know have had any experiences with liver disease and plant-based diets. Always curious to hear about that stuff. And of course, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.